In today's pregnancy update, I will be sharing with you how I am preparing for a natural labor and delivery. Every day we dance and life's been smiling. I'm delighted cause I got you. Hi everyone, it's Natalie. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you've ever been here and you want to get caught up on all of my pregnancy updates, then I will leave a link in the description box to that whole playlist. I am 37 weeks pregnant and that by most doctors is considered term. Some consider it early term, but basically it means that if I was to go into labor naturally right now, they would not try to stop my labor, but things would progress as usual and I could have my baby at any point. That's pretty exciting and it has really made me think about the stuff that I have been doing lately, um, mentally, physically, supplements I've been taking, that sort of a thing, to uh, just make the process of a natural labor and delivery easier and more enjoyable and that is what I'm going to share with you in today's pregnancy update. I turned 37 weeks two days ago um, and that's when I took my weight and my belly shot. I always do it on the day that I turn my weeks over but I'm waiting to sit down until today just a couple of days later because I had a prenatal appointment, my 37 week prenatal appointment and I wanted to be able to uh, experience that and share it with you in this week's update. At 37 weeks pregnant, I stepped on the scale and I was still 135 pounds, which is a total of 20 pounds gained in this pregnancy. That's what my doctor's scale confirmed that I had gained 20 pounds so far. He's very happy about that. I am measuring at 42 and a half inches around the widest part of my belly, so definitely grew from last week. And when I had my fundal height measured, which is the way doctors do it, from my pubic bone to the top of my uterus, I was measuring right on track for 37 weeks. As far as symptoms go, um, 37 weeks pregnant, I am experiencing just about the same amount of contractions that I have been. They come every 15 minutes or so, and then when I'm going through a time where they're closer together, I can have them as close as every three to six minutes apart. Um, and just in this last week, there has definitely been a difference in in my pelvis so um, when I was at my doctor's appointment he did a cervical check a whole pelvic exam sort of a thing and he said that baby is engaged her head is right on my cervix and I'm dilated between a one or a two which is a little ambiguous just because I've already given birth vaginally before and that can throw off those initial readings for cervical dilation. Um, so he doesn't think that the contractions that I have had thus far have had any effect on my cervix, but baby is right there. That was the difference between the last cervical exam I had when I was in the hospital with the prodromal labor, that preterm labor scare that I had. Um, she was not engaged. Uh, but now she is, and so that's definitely a change and one that I can absolutely feel. I can really feel the difference. So this week, baby is the size of a large honeydew melon, about 18 or 19 inches long and over six pounds. Um, and let's see, today I am 37 and two days pregnant. Tomorrow I'm 37 and 3, which I gave birth. I went into labor and gave birth to my boys at 37 and 3 days. So I'm hoping to make it past the time that I actually went with my boys. I really feel good that I will. But in my doctor's appointment, he was just, you know, with his exam and with talking with me and, you know, just evaluating everything, he said that it's very possible, especially since this is my second pregnancy, that I could go into labor anytime just with the signs that he was seeing. But he would not be surprised if I went uh, on my due date, past my due date a little bit. It's not looking like... I'm going to go into labor any second, um, which makes me feel good because quite honestly, when it comes to just the practicality and how I'm putting everything together and my life, I could use a week or two. I really could. I just have some other stuff that I need to button up, which I hesitate to say because I feel like once those words leave my mouth, all of a sudden I'm going to go into labor and wouldn't that just be Murphy's Law? So speaking of labor, let's talk about the things 
uh, little supplements that I'm taking and uh, stuff that I am doing to encourage natural labor. A couple weeks ago, I gave you guys the update that my hospital, the team of OBs, had signed off on me attempting a vaginal birth after C-section. So if it's your first time here at my channel, I'll just give you a quick little overview of what it's been like for me. I had twins in my last pregnancy. I went into labor naturally. I had a baby vaginally, and then I had a C-section a couple hours later to deliver the second baby. So I am someone who has experienced both types of birth. And um, I know what I would rather go through. I know what I would rather recover from, and that is absolutely hands down a vaginal birth. And so, when I found out that I was pregnant, I knew that I needed to do some more research and to equip myself to advocate for having a VBAC. I have gotten clearance to uh, attempt a VBAC and I'm very happy about that. And so now the real just sort of crunch time research has begun. I have uh, looked into a lot of great resources for natural living. Mama Natural, you guys have heard me talk about her before. She is one of my favorite gals to watch here on YouTube. She has an amazing blog website. I get her baby updates every week. And um, she just has a lot of really practical advice. So I've been drawing upon a lot of the research resources that she cites as well as watching other mamas here on YouTube who have experienced natural birth, who are very passionate about it, and who love to share that sort of a thing. And so I will link some of my favorite of those YouTube gals in the description box of this video. Go tell them Natalie sent you and give them some love for me. Um, but basically in my research, I've kind of come up with a little game plan for myself that I have been implementing but not sharing with you yet just because I didn't have that verdict yet. Um, I didn't know if I would be like mandated to do a C-section, um, but I just wanna share with you. And these are things that I have absolutely run past my doctor. He is aware of every single food, nutrition, supplement, um, level of activity, things that I have been implementing. I've talked to him about it several weeks ago and he uh, gave me clearance. So before you implement any of these things into your pregnancy, absolutely speak with your own doctor or midwife, whoever you receive care from, just to make sure that it is the right decision for you. I am in no way giving medical advice in this video. I just want to share with you my thinking and what I have been doing lately. So like I mentioned before, I am really trying to stay hydrated and it doesn't take a lot of trying for me because I'm someone who drinks so much water. I will fill this with ice water five, six, seven times a day not kidding. Um, and then I am also drinking another thing, which is red raspberry leaf tea. So I got an organic kind. Uh, I just ordered it off of Amazon. I did a lot of research about that. And uh, my doctor advised me to not drink it until I was at least 36 weeks pregnant, especially since I'm someone who has experienced a lot of contractions in this later part of pregnancy. He didn't want it to kickstart anything, even though it has never been proven that it would. He just wanted to be on the safe side and I totally respected that and I agreed with him and so when I hit 36 weeks pregnant I started drinking this red raspberry leaf tea. I am not a warm beverage drinker and so I made iced tea every day. I would brew it in my French press and then let it steep overnight sometimes, make it nice and strong, transfer it into a big jug with a lot of like local raw honey which is also really good for you um, and I would just sit that in the fridge and refill my cup and making sure that I was also, you know, drinking enough water to counteract any sort of diuretic thing that would happen with that tea. The tea did not replace my water intake. It was just in addition to my water intake. And then um, in the past couple of weeks, in the morning time, I have been mixing Moringa leaf powder in with my morning cup of iced tea. Moringa leaf powder on its own tastes really very, very bitter and grassy, but mixed in with the honey and the tea, it's not bad at all in my opinion. Another diet thing is I have been eating a lot of dates. This is one of the things that uh, Mama Natural 
suggested. It was something that I actually did in my last pregnancy and dates um, in the body have sort of an oxytocin effect which can help soften your cervix. It can help uh, support labor once it does start. Now again none of these things actually start labor so I'm not talking about stuff to induce naturally. I don't want to induce myself until I'm farther along. I'm not looking for that sort of options yet. This is more just to get my body as healthy and to support the system down there in the uterus area that uh, just to make it as healthy as possible for when it's time to go. Um, and then as far as supplements go, I have been taking this evening primrose oil. Um, again, I ran this by my doctor and he was okay with it and he actually suggested it. So I will take my prenatal vitamin, I take a probiotic every day, and then starting in week 36, I started taking evening primrose oil orally. Three of these capsules a couple of times a day morning and evening basically and then at night my doctor suggested once I hit 37 weeks pregnant to start inserting these vaginally which sounds totally weird it's a pill but it's like an oil soft gel and they suggest at night because it would kind of be uncomfortable to have this going on in there during the day when you're trying to walk around to be vertical and upright and the idea behind the evening primrose oil is that just all of the flesh tissue cervix everything down there gets softened by this it has sort of a prostaglandins effect down there and in when you take it orally it has that effect on the rest of your body and I did this in my last pregnancy and I had an induction date. So I had a day that they said, if you haven't gone into labor by this time, you're coming in on this day and we are inducing you. And that's how it was with twins. I don't want to be induced this time. I don't expect that I will have to be induced. And actually, last time, I didn't have to be induced. I went into natural labor and I showed up at the hospital four centimeters dilated. And just a couple days before that, I was only at like one and a half. So I definitely think that the steps that I took to um, prepare my body for when it decided to go into natural labor, like taking the evening primrose oil and eating dates and staying well hydrated and that sort of a thing, really contributed to the fact that I had an easy labor, relatively easy labor. Another way I am preparing for natural labor is to really stay active. And so I am trying not to sit down as much. For the past two months, I have been having very consistent contractions. And if I did too much activity, the contractions would really get close together and they would start to become painful. And I was not to a point yet in my pregnancy where it would really be all that healthy to have a baby. Now that I am at this point, which was around 36 weeks, started last week, I have been really um, mindful of how much I've been sitting down, how much I've been laying down, lounging around, how much time I'm spending on my butt. And um, so I've made the conscious effort to get up. I take a little walk every day, um, whether that's around Target or you know, in the street in my neighborhood, that sort of a thing. I just make sure that I just get some walking in. And yes, the contractions will pick up sometimes after I do that, but they level out again. It's not kicking me into labor, but I just want to make sure that, you know, cardio wise, I'm breathing and I get my heart pumping and I'm really just working my pelvis and strengthening my thighs. I have been doing like, uh, little exercises that help baby get into the right position, that help my body get strengthened in my lower core, um, that help stretch my muscles and, and just bring oxygen and blood flow to all the regions of my body so that I am healthy <laughs> and strong. And I wish I could have been doing this sooner, but you know, I was on like moderate bed rest and that's just not possible and it's not wise but it feels so freeing to be 37 weeks pregnant and able to just sort of kind of carry on and encourage this to happen without, um, again, I'm not inducing labor, I'm not trying to make labor start, but I have the freedom now because of where I'm at in my pregnancy to be more active and to 
implement more supplements into my life and to not worry that if I went into labor right now, there would be a problem, if that makes sense. So it feels really, really good. I'm just going to talk about the last little realm of things that I'm doing, and that's just to prepare myself mentally and spiritually for going into natural labor and for giving birth naturally. And actually one of the biggest things that I have been telling myself and praying about is the possibility, the very real possibility, that this may end up in a C-section. And it may completely go totally counter to what I would hope. Um, the only thing predictable about birth is its unpredictability. And I am embracing that wholeheartedly, but still standing by the things that I truly want out of this experience. I am a person of faith. I am a Christian. I have an intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father, and so prayer has always been a really big part of my life. Um, but just more so now that I am gearing up to welcome a baby. I can talk a good talk, but there are times where I'm like scared, like, oh my gosh, I have to experience something so painful. And I had an epidural line placed last time, um, but I didn't have any epidural medication when I was giving birth. I was able to do it. And so I do have a lot of confidence in myself, especially since this is the second time my doctor at my appointment was like, you have a proven pelvis. Apparently that's the term for, you know, a mom who's already given birth vaginally. My pelvis is proven. That was really encouraging. Um, but I'm praying a lot that the Lord would just strengthen my body and he would strengthen my mind and my pain management. I am pretty tough, but there's this fear. I, I think it's so natural. Everyone has this fear. Like, is it going to be too much? Is it going to be more than I can handle? Um, and I feel really good that things will go according to plan, but I also need to hold that idea very loosely and just say, Lord, it's in your hands. Your will be done. Whatever happens, happens. And the biggest goal is what I'm actually praying about more, which is the health of this baby, the health of our family, the happiness of our family, and just going through this transition and glorifying God through the process. So I have another rambly pregnancy update for you guys that turned into another rambling one. You guys are always so sweet when I have these sort of pregnancy updates, but I am quite weepy and emotional. Um, I should have thrown that into my little section about my pregnancy symptoms this week. Um, I'm very emotional and I'm crying at the drop of a hat. Like I, I literally feel like I could cry right now and I don't even know why. <laughs> So I can tell hormones are changing, stuff is starting to be set in motion, and the time is very, very near. If you guys enjoyed today's pregnancy update, would you let me know by giving this video a thumbs up? And if you're not subscribed yet, would you do so? And if you are subscribed, would you click the little bell beside the subscribe button to turn on those channel notifications so that you don't miss when I post a new video? The next few weeks are gonna be pretty crazy. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I want you guys to be there for it, and uh, I don't want you to miss when I post a new video. Thank you for being here for today's update, and I will catch you in my next one. Oh, I got you, there's no reason to Chasing payment on my own Cause you're here to stay every night and day I'm delighted cause I got you I just spilled my water. Ugh. And now I'm too lazy to go down and pick it up.